Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Stay Bullet. Go ahead, man. Keep Stay Bulletproof with Tate Fletcher. And um, I don't know what episode this is, but I'm here today, and uh, it's kind of our fight edition, I guess. I got Kyle Noak here, um, Ultimate Fighter, and um, and Keith also, uh, Jardine, and myself. And so we're here over at Keith's studio, and we're just getting it started. We're talking right now about sex at dawn. But, just turn Keith on to and he's he's getting into it so uh, away we go I guess uh, thanks y'all for jumping in and yeah the only rules is that you got to be kind of here when when we're talking and, and other than that um, you're on here and and uh, away we go <laughs> and these are two of the most talkative people ever hi how are you yeah we did that's all right Carl's beautiful wife is here who I haven't met yet, but I guess we will later. <laughs> um, so anyway, you're talking about this book you're halfway through. The book that you told me about, Sex at Dawn, I don't have many opinions on it yet. Well, I have opinions, but nothing that I want to like commit myself in because I'm only halfway through it, but it, it's pretty interesting. It's good, huh? It's uh, I never heard anybody, like it was the first time I ever heard the term sperm competition before, and I was like, <laughs> that's just a crazy idea to run across, you know? But um, I was I was on the web today. Somebody sent me this thing, and they're like, I think it was great whites, but there were sharks that were when they were in utero, when their fetuses in the belly, they would kill and eat the other baby sharks that are in there. And I was like, that's like beyond sperm competition. So like they're in the belly of the mother of the shark still, yeah. and they'll kill and eat another fetus. Like that is some gnarly apex predator shit. It's awesome. The world is an awesome place. Carl, of course, is from uh, Lithuania. <laughs> and not not American, so he's seen a lot of that kind of thing. Uh, is that is that you see similar crazy shit with with uh, with crocodiles? That's what you're most used to, right? I guess Kyle's background a little bit. Tell us a little bit about you, Kyle. How do we know each other, and where'd you come from? Uh, I'm not quite sure how I know you. Um, you know, I know Keith for a long time, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not you know, the Aboriginals, don't you? We can talk about the Aboriginal family structure. You got to be up here. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna pick you up. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know too much. I'm going to say I'm real dumb today because you guys know a lot, man. And, um, I'm not really intelligent, but I'm here, which is good. I like that massage. Hey, I, thank you. About being intelligent, I know how, how to read enough just to pretend. If I only say a few <laughs> words, people might think I'm smart. But if we go much beyond that, then <laughs> I feel like it's just picking up just enough uh, enough information that you can regurgitate perfectly so that if they question you, you're like, I don't know, this other guy's got sources, and you don't have to really own any of it. Yeah. <coughs> that's the thing is everybody always say, wants proof and it's like well uh man this guy just said and, and he seems a lot smarter than me yeah. So, yeah yeah i'm like i don't know stephen hawkins is in like that's how smart i am though like i'm like fuck i don't i think we shouldn't have all the people there's a lot of people that maybe we shouldn't have and then see a guy like stephen hawkins get born i'm like i guess we put him down in the tribe because he'd be a lot to take care of and then with all my infinite wisdom i'd have killed maybe the smartest guy in the world like i don't know anything that's too much. So, so the world's gonna get to know uh, Carl Noak pretty soon. So, like, like, is that happening still? Is that what's going my, on? That's my American name, Carl, but my real name's Kyle. It sounds the same coming out of your mouth. What he said is <laughs> Carl <laughs> and Kyle. Said, that's my American name is Carl, but my real name is Carl. Ka- Kyle. <laughs> that's that's not two syllables though. Just one syllable. <laughs> Kyle is. He's uh um you're going on when when do you leave? You go for the Ultimate Fighter uh, number forty two is it now that they're on? Yeah, I think it's one hundred and forty two. Um, I think I leave in uh, yeah, late October, so I'm here for a little bit longer. And who's the other coach? Uh, Patrick Cote. Oh, that's cool, man. He's one of my favorite guys that fought Anderson Silva so far. Like that was one of my favorite fights. Not really, <laughs> what like him and up until he hurt his knee in that man like. I don't know. You never really seen a guy move like Anderson before, like that. Like when, and then that fight, you saw him for enough minutes because I think it went to the third round before he got hurt. That uh, that's awesome. That's a tough guy. I remember when he dropped Tito too. That was a, a big upset. Yeah, he's fought at two hundred five and then fought Anderson at 180, 185, and now he's at one seventy. So, you know, it's going to be a good fight and it's going to be a good show. I hope. It's going to be really cool to see. Like for me, I'm excited. Like I haven't watched episode forever like probably since your season like oh i was on with rashad i watched a couple of those but uh, i don't care 
but but I'm gonna watch this one. Like I don't even I probably won't even watch the girls, but I'll watch Kyle's because. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's interesting to me is like how do they get something out of Kyle like uh, th- I know how they are and they're going to be like we're going to need some action here we're going to have to create something between you and Patrick and <laughs> Kyle's like oh no nah, he's a good fighter and he's real tough he trains hard <laughs> but until the moment that I don't know Patrick at all but if he starts to mess with you man then it's going to get awesome yeah I guess that's why I'm taking Easy with me too that wrestling coach uh, Easy's wild man so I can just put emphasis on him to, to create some drama in the house. You're bringing Izzy Martinez with you? Yeah, I am. He's loud. Yeah, he, he's, you know what, if I say, Carl, we need something, i be like, Izzy, just get in there and do something. It'll be awesome, because that is, that's a dude, he's like, he'll talk all that uh, shit. He doesn't give a shit. Yeah. They, what if they're going to bring up your wife, you know? Nah, that, I'll, that's crossing the line. I'll have to say something there. They will. Nah, okay, I, I don't okay, like we're, to. We're getting on fire right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Oh man, fun! Yeah, and I, so, I go from north to hundred, though I got no in between. So I might yeah, calm he's like either a calm C or yeah. DEFCON five, and the exactly. nukes are coming. Exactly. Um, where where are you gonna pull guys from Australia too to be part of your training camp? Or are you just bringing Izzy, or who, who? What other coaches or help are you having? Uh, coaches, I got Izzy, and then uh, Tusa from uh, Albuquerque here. Cool man, that's badass. Uh, he's a great jiu jitsu guy, five time uh, world no gi champion. So. Yep. Be a great guy to have, and then um, Feroz is coming as well from uh, up in Canada. Cool, man. Nice. Yeah. I wore uh, a gi for the first time ever <laughs> yesterday at Tusa's gym. So I put on a gi for the first time, and uh, I learned one move. Uh, uh, some some guy, I said, uh, Wes, I said, Wes, show me one move so I can use it later. And he showed me a clock choke. So I got one guy with a clock choke, and I was pretty pumped up. So then I was going with Tusa, and Fool was starting from the back <laughs> position. So I was like, all right, I'm going to give this clock choke a guy. I think I heard him chuckle a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I've seen this before. <laughs> the guy, guy's just phenomenal, man. So is that a new love of yours now? Is uh, is that? Gi? You got glass on the floor. Yeah, the gi jiu-jitsu. Uh, it, it's, it's fun, man. You know what's cool about it is, is I was thinking about it afterwards. Like, I had a blast with it. I got tired. I didn't like some things of it because I like – I like the wrestling style and style of grappling. I like to just to flow and to power through things, but you can't. You, can't. you like to power through things, huh? Yeah. It's weird. I've <laughs> never felt that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's just like uh, what's cool about it is, is talking about the art of it. It's just a different modality for doing the same thing. So like, even though I've never done it before, it was cool just to like feel things I would normally do and, and how to do it differently with grabbing the gi. So, so I, I had a blast with that. Yeah, it's the same for me. For me, it's just fun. You know, it's it's jujitsu. It's like what we're normally doing, but we throw a gi on. So it's a little bit extra fun for me. You're right. You want to take that it's lid cool off that too because you got like um, different throws. Like you got different grabs that you can do, and it it translates to different things. Like a lot of stuff. Like when I don't know, it's like working on that show with you and all those jackets that you have on. Yeah. Like if you want to work badass throws, it's like that's th- those are all the setups from yeah. there, and it's like. With wrestling, it doesn't come up in the same way where you got a good handle, you know? Yeah. It's the same kind of thing, too. Is like, like you're pulling me in this direction. It's like back in the beginning when you didn't know jujitsu, you're pulling me in this direction. Well, I'm going to assume that that's bad, so I'm going to go yeah. the other All way. All I know is I don't want to go where you want me to go. That's exactly. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So how long is the show? Is it going to be six or eight weeks? Do you know? Uh, I filmed for six weeks, I think. What weight class is it? Uh, 170 and 185. Do you know any of the guys from like back in the days from Danny's place or anything like that that'll be on it or no? Um, I know there's a few guys, a few young guys since I've left Australia. They're going to try out for the show, but um, you know I don't know, and hopefully they're going to fly me home for the tryout so I get to know a few guys and and see what they're like myself. But hey, what's going on with Adrian? Is he still fighting? Yeah, he he, he was out for a long time. He got into uh, he went to a nightclub and a couple of uh, big you know Adrian's a 155er, but a couple of big guys beat him up. And I uh, actually fractured his skull and stuff like that. So he had to have facial reconstruction and stuff. So he was out for a long time. But uh, he had a comeback fight uh, a few months ago. And um, he, he beat the guy. He's, the guy he fought was, since Adrian left, become number one guy in Australia. And Adrian beat him in the first round by TKO. So That's sick. Yeah, Adrian's yeah. still holding it down back home. This guy's bad, man. Uh, just with this uh, UFC expansion in Australia, man, this guy will be there pretty soon. What's his last name, Adrian? What? Adrian Pang. Pang. Yeah. How do you spell it? P A N G. Pretty harsh name. 
half Chinese. Uh -huh. I thought you had to be all Australian to be in Australia. I know, we're mixed in Australia. We're the biggest multicultural country going, I think. Is that right? Yeah, we, we, we got everyone in Australia, a little bit of everything. In my experience in Sydney, I was in Sydney for, for that fight, and I didn't meet a single Australian there, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Sydney's like the boiling, the melting pot of it all, I think. Yeah. Huh. It's interesting. Yeah, New Zealand like that too or no? Um, not as much. There, there are a lot of uh, multicultural people there as well, but I think uh, Australia especially. I just met a dude, a Samoan dude from New Zealand. That Big dude? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but I thought they were, I thought that, but that's some different shit. The Maori tribes and all that, they're not Samoans. That's something else, right? Yeah, the, the, the Maoris are from uh, New Zealand. Then you've got like Tonga and... Samoa. I was talking, I had a fight in Hawaii once, and this guy that put us up uh, for dinner one night, he, I go, what's the difference with Samoan and Tongan? Do you know the difference? I have no idea. I don't, no idea. He, he was a brother. He was the little brother. He was 250, uh -huh. and he was the smallest one out of eight. <laughs> and, uh, like, I, I can't, his mother must have been just, just <laughs> tough. Yeah. Um, and he goes, yeah, Samoan is, Tongan, same as Samoan, but no brain. <laughs> I never repeated that to anybody except, no. you know. But I'm not going to say anything about it because I've got to get back home soon. So Yeah, on, exactly. <laughs> so go, go, go out on a limb with something <laughs> there, man. Well, a little of your background, too. You, 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 come, uh, you come from a bodyguard background. Did you start training before? What, what came first? No, I started training first. And uh, actually, Steve Irwin was, uh, started getting into jiu-jitsu and that as well because my coach, Dan Higgins, was working for him. And Steve started seeing it on TV and stuff like that and asked Dan to start training him. Uh, you know, Steve kind of got sick of training with just Dan, so I asked Dan if anyone else would like to come in and work for him. And, you know, I happened to be Dan's number one student at the time, so, and I needed a job. So Dan asked me to come in, and, and uh, you know, straight away, Steve had seen a few of my fights, and then I went in for my job interview, and I remember him saying, I went through all the HR stuff and all that first, and then they're like, oh, it's all depending on Steve whether he gives you the job or not, you know. So I got into like a little private meeting with Steve, and the first thing he said to me, he's like, right, you got the job, now let's talk about fighting. <laughs> uh, so uh, that was my job interview and then the, then the HR and all that come back in they said well you'd be doing this and this and Steve's like no he's not he's doing this he's coming in training with me and then he can go home and do what he wants and stuff like that so awesome so Steve loved me but all the uh, HR department who hated me you'll, you'll go back and uh, and visit there then and see his family you're still close with his wife and his daughter and everything uh, yeah every time I go home I like to drop in and see him and uh go to the zoo and it's still a great place to go you know i love going home going to the zoo every time i'm home will you make any of the guys on your team fight crocodiles i wished can I they wished, do that uh, will they do that have they talked about it or no no nah, no definitely not see people don't realize that kyle used to go out with uh steve every summer and go tagging uh crocs so mm. so kyle was jumping how many how many he must have jumped probably on 100 crocs before yeah, yeah. countless um i think the I, can, I know the biggest one i jumped on was over 20 foot long so uh oh that's crazy. I saw a picture of one recently. What a twenty foot croc is like, like imagine like looking down what twenty foot is. Yeah, like a big old like croc. a bus. Yeah. Like there was one. There's a picture on the internet recently of a, a of a tribe that was walking like from the tail to the head, and there's like yeah. forty or fifty people lined up, and it was like a thirty four foot crocodile that they'd found somewhere off Africa. Crazy. Yeah, and and the Australian crocs are they're a little bit different to the African crocs. They're, they're a lot more aggressive and, and dangerous, yeah. I guess. You know, really I remember you were saying they'll, they'll, they're like predatory to where they're like, even if there's a, hun a hunk of meat, they want to hunt you. Like they'll they'll yeah. they'll pretend like they're going for that, and then they'll go for you. Yeah, and and they're super smart. They got like uh, I think it's called a cerebral cortex where they where they can learn. So uh, you know, if a pig crosses the water one time, they'll watch it cross, and then the second time it does, they'll be like, all right, that's where the pig crosses the water. And then the third time's when they'll come up and grab it. So that's why and compared to an alligator, it's just completely different animal. Like they're stupid animals comparatively, <laughs> right? Uh, alligators are just more docile. You know, uh, Steve especially used to call them frog with teeth. So uh, you know, like he'd have no worries jumping in there and playing with it and picking it right, up. And stuff. Right, right. But with a crocodile, you know, it's it's gonna go for you no matter what. Are they the same as that? You can hold their mouth down, and there's not a lot of like they're not they they can't struggle against that much. Yeah, you know, they've got incredible uh, closing power with their jaws. They, they say it's like uh, equivalent to the brakes on a jumbo jet when they actually close their jaw. But open it not so much. We used to just duct tape their mouth up, and they couldn't open their mouth. You had a friend of yours that got his back and his ass treated like an, <laughs> treated, treated like an accordion? Uh-huh, yeah. Where's, uh, he, he got in, there was a flood at the zoo one day, and he got in to, to clean some debris out of the cage or something like that. I can't remember the exact details. 
but somebody was supposed to be watching for the crop to make sure where it was and someone wasn't doing their job properly and next minute the cross come up and they took a big bite out of Wes's ass and you know luckily Wes didn't taste so good so the crock let him go God yeah. he didn't lose any mobility or he's, he can he, everything's fine now no I think everything's fine now he's got a big scar on the back of his leg and on his ass but uh, you know he's happy to show anyone whenever they ask it's a crazy thing you're at a zoo you kind of feel like I'm basically safe or whatever you know or what, but you're like you're with fucking apex predators. Like the only thing that's around that long, really, that's been just killing shit for that is like a great white shark. Cause like there's not a whole. It's like that's a dinosaur. Yeah, I remember at uh, one time the guys from Jackass <laughs> they come to Australia to film their show, and they kept on contacting the zoo. They were like, you know, we want to come in there, and uh, cause they thought crocodiles like alligators. Like we want to come in and do some things in the zoo, and we we're like, uh, I don't think you can do that. You know, you probably won't get away with what you get away with other stuff. So we had to uh, kind of ban the guys from coming in. Um, I was I was at the zoo before one of my. Georges, we, we, uh, I was at, at the Australian Zoo. Because you went down there to go visit and train with Danny and them? Oh, yeah, yeah Danny and Steve and all that. Like, spent, what, two weeks, three weeks. It was awesome, man. Like, you guys had the best job, though, man. <laughs> it was. They, it wasn't they, even like a job. They, they, they were king of the zoo, man. <laughs> they, they just walked Rad. Around. Yeah. yeah. When it was at for everybody else just hating those oh, motherfuckers. Oh, everybody, everybody <laughs> hating. <man. laughs> yeah. Those, they're those, they'd go in and create trouble wherever they went. <laughs> uh, we were in the cat exhibit, and, uh, and, uh, I think it was a tigers. I forgot what it was. It was tigers. Yeah, they were walking around and and uh, and they, they were like like little, like little girls were up, little kids were up at the window like 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 trying to try, trying to like like get their attention and stuff. And they they were playing back a little bit and like the and the, the, the the cat keeper was telling me that what these people don't realize is that um these uh these animals like they want nothing more than to break through that window and eat these people for for lunch. So like crazy. <laughs> But they're oh, isn't it cute? Isn't <laughs> right. It yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we got to feed the crocs and everything. It was a blast. That's yeah. sick. Yeah, that's what somebody said about polar bears. They're like, they come out predatory. It's not like they learn to kill. It's like they come out, and if there's a baby seal there, a little baby polar bear will kill it. Like, that's it's it's on right away. Like, that's what it's for. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, that, my, my story with, um, uh, I was with Nate, Nate Marquardt there. My Nate was up for the week, and, um, we were doing. We're watching um, Steve do a show. He does a little show in the, the big um, um, arena, and like we heard that we might get a feed of croc, but we weren't sure because we're not really doing it much anymore. That kind of thing, and um, just out of nowhere, like we got. I think you got a call, or, or, or Danny got a call. Meet 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 Steve up at at this place, and cool, we're up there. And like, are we doing this right now? Sick. Like, I wouldn't even know. And then Steve, because he's a celebrity, he's on a little motorcycle. Come, and it was he he runs down to us real quick. All right, right. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk up there on the the bridge there, and, and you, you are we really doing this? And we yeah, you're gonna have a piece of meat. You're gonna drop that piece. You gotta drop it low enough where the the croc sees you and wants to engage. But just just keep in mind that that, that croc he, he don't like he'll take that <coughs> meat, but he, he don't he don't care about it. He wants to get here. That's all. all he's wow. And, and it's this way he put it. He's all, it's just like a fight, man. You're gonna be down there. You're hanging. You're gonna see he locks on to you, and you're in the zone right now, and there's no going back. So what you gotta do is you gotta you're gonna lean over, you're gonna hang over, and you gotta keep it down there until he starts to jump. And once he jumps, you're gonna pull back, bam, and he eats it. So <laughs> yeah, so, so that, was that, that, that was our training. So we get up. There, that was our training. There, there's, 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 there's a little. How arena. big are they? How many weigh? How much they weigh? Oh, that was probably 18 footer. I forget the name yeah. of it. It was that 18 footer. I remember that though. But um, <laughs> and uh, here's your training. Yeah, so so we go up on this bridge. It goes up over this little this little pond, and, and there's a there's a crowd of people watching us, and it's me and Nate Marquardt. And I go, I, go, I step right in front of Nate. I'm going first, man. It's not like I was brave <laughs> going first because I didn't want to see Nathan do it, and then now I'm gonna have to do it right. next. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I'm first. I got this big old piece of meat, and you're hanging way over there, man. You're closer. Just to Just by your hand. Your meat's on the hand. Yeah, meat's on the hand. You got hold of it, uh, and you're hanging over there, and you see him, bam. Just like you said, it, it looks locks on to you. And it starts swimming around like it's trying to be fly, and it kind of works away under you. And then, bam, it shoots off like a dolphin, right? The fast yeah. little dolphin, it shoots right off, bam, and you pull up. And it seems like it just missed you, and, it, and I, it teeth like just slam together right, right, right below you, and it sounds like a gunshot right, right, yeah. right below you. Bam. Jesus. It's almost like you almost feel the pressure of the jaws yeah. closing, like the wind, you know. Like, no oh. shit. Yeah. What a rush, man. And <laughs> uh, is it? When he closes his jaws, uh, your hands off the meat at that point. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> you're, you're, you're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You just kind of let it go and pull up. I think, yeah. I think he must have better training than me because uh, when I done the only thing he said to me is like, 
you don't let go of that meat and it grabs your arm, it's going to rip your arm off your body and pull all your guts out of your arm and everything like that. <laughs> <laughs> He'd never seen that before. He's just imagining. So my first time, as soon as I seen the croc come out of the water, I just dropped the meat and threw my arm up in the air like, nah, I'm not. Yep. Hey, didn't he take you diving once before where you guys had no diving experience? And oh, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The very, very first time I went scuba diving, uh, we we gone. So he, he had a big boat and we went over to an island in, near Australia and we went surfing there. And he got sick of surfing, so he said, let's go scuba diving. I said, oh, I've never been scuba diving. He's like, oh, you'll be right. Just put this thing in your mouth. If you spew, push this button here, and that's it. That's all you have to worry about. Awesome. <laughs> so that was my scuba diving lesson. Awesome. How'd it go? It was good. We went down and saw a couple of sharks, and uh, we, we dove on a shipwreck. And uh, yeah, All great white sharks out there? There are great white sharks, but luckily this wasn't. I don't know what type of shark it was. I was too scared when I saw it. Um, Steve was cool. He chased after the shark and, and done what he did, but... Uh, <laughs> He's crazy. Wild. Yeah. You get philosophical, man. Like, Steve was just like, you were talking <coughs> about some people you know. There's just some people like, like just like, like to touch people, man. Like, like mm-hmm. there's just something in, in, in their brain to make them different than all of us. And Steve was just definitely one of those guys. Like, animals, like some, some animalistic and animals, and you can like sense that in them. And, 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 and like, you can make them feel almost like how they wanted to. Or he could read how they're feeling. Really? Yeah. Just crazy. And that's why, uh, like, like you told me this, Dan. A lot of people told me this. Like, a lot of people like knew that like Steve, um, like he, like he was out of his element in the water, and, and like that was the most dangerous thing for him ever would be to be in the ocean, and and, and that that's how he got in trouble. And, and it's it's kind of like like almost like people kind of knew that in a way. Right. That, yeah. that that's where he was most out of his element. It's weird. He's so it's like he's uh, just seeing him on television. Like such a calm spirit of a guy like it's not like like he's around all these predatory animals and he's just really calm mellow like lightly jovial like it, you know what i mean it's not there's no none of that there's no eh, like no anger or anything uh, with him you know and i can attest in <coughs> um from a little bit i met him is like like you kind of wonder like a personal that personality like that on tv is like this guy for real is he just <laughs> making up something right to, to yeah so people want to watch him but, yeah but that was like probably on tv like him dialed back right yeah, well, definitely yeah. him dialed back uh yeah. The only difference is he used to swear a lot more in real life. Um, you know, on TV. And he trained he, himself not to. Yeah, on TV he said crikey and stuff like that, but if he wasn't on TV he'd be swearing. But uh, he was just, man, that guy was just passionate about life, I think. You know, um, going back to MMA, uh, we used to do, like, um, full contact sparring on Wednesdays. So that was, like, little gloves and, like, full MMA sparring, basically. Right. He built us a cage at the zoo to train in, and uh, he'd, he'd go down there Tuesday night we trained on Wednesday. He'd be down there Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, 2 o'clock in the morning with his gloves on, his hands all wrapped up, shadow boxing, waiting for us to get there at 7 o'clock so we could start this MMA sparring. Like, that's how excited, excited he was about it. He couldn't sleep. He'd be in bed tossing and turning. He'd be like, I've got to get down there. And he'd go wow. down there by himself. You think all the different lives a guy can lead, you know what I mean? Like, what uh-huh. he would have done if, if, you know, you look at, like, like I don't know, like that, that Malcolm Gladwell book, he, he wrote uh, Outliers. He talks about people being born in certain times and, and mm-hmm. certain aspects of life being uh, available to them that like if he's if he's born a little bit later like what uh-huh. where he'd have been like if he was 10 or 15 years younger you know or whatever like would he have gone and done that or what like it's weird the way excellence expresses itself in people that are striving for that kind of thing he actually wanted to have a fight he wanted to do uh, have a uh, a charity fight and uh he made me go to the movies one time and fight crocodile dundee nah he, he made me go to the movies one time to watch vin diesel movie uh the pacifier because uh-huh. he wanted to size vin diesel up on screen <laughs> <laughs> so we had to go watch this kids movie about him babysitting kids right and and, 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 and any action that you see is his, his stunt double anyway <laughs> not like how he would move anyhow because he originally wanted to fight wesley snipes but he heard wesley snipes was too small because steve was six foot two you know he's the same height as me and rogan was gonna fight wesley snipes too was he <laughs> Wesley Snipes was looking for anything. <laughs> like he's like, I need to get popular again. I got to pay the IRS. Yeah, that's crazy. But uh, Steve had legitimate skills. He was he was he was a strong grappler. And big. He was a big dude. He was probably uh, you know, like six foot two and two oh five. Wow. Yeah, proper. Strong as hell, man. Um, well, you like, figure you grow up in, in the ocean first, yeah. fighting, and then you're fighting animals. Yeah, like he would grab around you, like if you're in his guard or something, and you just like you just feel his strength. Holding on to crocodiles. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. 
So you were, were you were before you got this call. What, what were you thinking about your career? You come off an injury, and and uh, and you're all you're nursed back. You feel good. You feel strong. You feel confident in your in your limbs. Uh, I'm getting back. You know, I um, had shoulder surgery November last year. Kind of put me back a bit. Then I found out I had to have wrist surgery early this year. And then they told me, uh, you know, it'd probably be a year before I fight again, or nine months before I can start training for a fight. You know, so. A lot goes through your mind in that time, you know, you're thinking, you know, can I come back? Is that too, too much time to have off, especially when you're 33 years old? Um, you know, so a lot was going through my mind whether I was going to keep fighting or not. And, um, you know, luckily I got this call to, to do the show, kind of give me a reason to be off for so long and, and kind of give me that excitement back again. So It's crazy, like even thinking a few years ago before you went on the original, on the Ultimate Fighter before you were a, a participant or can, however you say what we were <laughs> um <laughs> but you were like fuck man i don't know how i'm gonna yeah. make this work if somebody doesn't like if if something doesn't come through like i should maybe i just go back to australia like you're battling with a lot of that yeah it was you know i was like because i had no income in that time either you know so um there was a lot of things battling against me injuries no money stuff like that but um you know once this got announced of course a couple of sponsors come on board and and pay now so i get money through that way and then like i said it just it gives me a reason to be off for so long, so it gives me time to heal without having that pressure of, you know, shit, I've got to get back in there and fight. I've got to do right. this, I've got to do that. I've got to keep my name relevant. I've got to do all this other stuff. It's weird to think that, like, when you started, there wasn't, like, an expectation that you'd be able to make a living doing this, you know? And you, you're, there's, like, just these different segments of guys in the UFC, I think, that, and now it's just on the other end of it where guys are looking at it when they're 13 years old going, oh, I could make a living. I could be a superstar or athlete at this but yeah. like th like at the beginning of that that time for you and for for all of us there there wasn't any of that it was just like i don't know people ask like why do people do that and i'm like i don't know they do it all kinds of different reasons but one of the reasons that i think started fighting was like the, like to find out like who are you now like in, in this expression under this kind of pressure like you, you've built your skills and you're you're an artist in this way and like and like who who do you, who have you become and and are you able to articulate that when it's in this stage, when it counts, you know, kind of thing. And, like, what was the thing that drew you into it, and why did you begin um, your training, I guess? And did you think when you started training that you wanted to fight? Was that the thing? Or did you just – were you looking just to, you know, meditate doing jujitsu for a couple hours a day or whatever, you know? No, um, when I first started fighting, I was, I was 22, almost 23. And, um, to be honest, I never even saw MMA, really. Um, I was playing rugby league back home, and, and I was looking for something to do in the off-season. And uh, – a friend of mine asked me to come along and, and train with him. And he'd been a uh, pro bodybuilder. So he's, uh, and I thought he meant come along and train some weights. So he's like, bring a pair of shorts and a shirt and, and we'll go train. And I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to bring a pair of shorts and a shirt. You know, I'm lifting weights. And anyway, we get to the gym. There's all these guys running around warming up. And I'm like, oh, shit, we're not doing lifting weights. We're doing something else. So, you know, I joined in the class. And, and uh, you know, uh, we rolled at the end of the class, like live grapple. I ended up tapping a few guys out and, and fell in love with it. You know, basically from then. And then two weeks after I st started training, he, he asked me if I wanted to have a fight. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> two weeks fight. after. Yeah. And then uh, two weeks after he, he asked me, I had my first fight. So it was about a month from the time I started till I had my first fight. Uh, but, you know, it, it's funny because my first few fights, I wasn't nervous at all because I wasn't expecting to make a career out of it. I, wasn't saying, I was just getting in right. there to have fun, you know. So, uh, and, and growing up in a small country town, I'd, I'd, I'd fought a lot growing up. Like... Uh, we used to play football just to fight, you know, because it was something to do on the weekends. It, there was, it was a small country town with nothing to do, a little Aboriginal community. So, uh, you know, that's what we did. So uh, the first few fights to me were just like anything else, like growing up, you know, I was fighting on the weekend like I was used to. So there was no pressure at all. Shit. That's, <laughs> how, that's how Johnny Depp pretended to be an Indian. That's bullshit. So, hey, why, 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 why'd you... Uh, what, what was your start into fighting before we get off uh, on onto something else? Fighting. Uh, he was born fighting. Look at him. Yeah. Man was born on Halloween. Come on. <laughs> you know, everybody. At every interview you do, somebody asks you that question, like, and you just like do your stock answer because there's really no real answer. It's just something like like you you look at all of us like when you're on a stunt crew, you look at all the stunt men. Like there's 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 a certain guy kind of guy that has something in them and. And for me, uh, fighting, I guess, was a way to test that and to prove yourself, or, like, to kind of see what you're all about. But, you know, you grew up watching Rocky and all that stuff, and, and you dream of fighting. And, yeah. and then I watched the original uh, uh, 
UFCs when they come out and like you know they were crap back then and you're like shit Hoist Grady just shooting a simple double leg and I was from a mile away shit I can do that right <laughs> and uh, after I was done playing football I, like you I played a little bit of rugby like one year of rugby and then it just I was young then and and I started getting into bar fights again and because I didn't have that outlet and and then I, there was a guy that around the corner that um I heard at a rec center that was teaching MMA classes and I went and, and started working out with that guy and and, I, and after like a month or so I, I started getting him pretty good and, and so we ta- talked about um uh, his trainer was, was Blake Jackson up here in Albuquerque and, and, I, and I was in 2000 and I came up twice and used Craig Jack Greg Jackson and the second time I moved up here to get this MMA thing it was 2000 it was nothing back then but I was like, I'll give this thing a no holds barred then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no gloves or nothing. And I'll just give this thing a shot for a year and see what, see what happens. I'll just see if I dedicate 100 mi- 100% of everything I got to one thing for a little bit of time and see what happens. So I gave it a year and it turned into two, three, four. Yeah. That's my and simple story. It's not much, there's not much to it really. It's just, it really comes down to, like you said, that whole certain thing that you, you can't really describe that, that's yeah. in, inside a lot of alpha males, you know? We're in that, sh- on, on that. And I don't know. I, it was weird that that one that one scene in Transcendence where we're, we're up on that ridge line and 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 it drops away into the riverbed and uh, it's up it's it's high up there. I, I don't know, yeah. and, but it looks it's sandy. It looks soft. You know, it doesn't look like it'd be bad if you if you went over yeah. really. But it's a sheer edge. It's yeah. like, and and standing on there and just doing nothing. But I'm looking and and I'm like, I, like I feel drawn to it like a, like like almost like the abyss is pulling me in it like i like i want to go you know and uh i was i was talking about that feeling to that mickey uh Giacomazzi a- afterwards at lunch and he goes he goes well yeah tate he says he says we all got that he says there's two guys on this set and there's there's those guys that are that kind of type of personality and then there's the other guys that are running to safety and those would be the producers <laughs> and the dra- yeah, like yeah, all that yeah. kind of stuff and and it's kind of like that it seems like cool like Absolutely. Um, you, you just reminded me of something else. Like when I was I was coaching college football at New Mexico Highlands University, and uh, I was a defensive coordinator, and I was going to these wrestling tournaments, freestyle wrestling tournaments. I'd do the local ones and whatever, but then I'd go to the Olympic Training Center and do like the Dave Schultz Memorial Tournament. I'd go to the national championships and all that stuff. And like I would just basically run hills and, and stuff and go to these tournaments, and they'd look at me like I was stupid. Like, why are you doing that? Like, <laughs> Like, I didn't have a chance. Like, why are you doing that? Like, these people don't understand why somebody like us would go. Right. Like, why, why, why would you go stick fight? Like, you, you Tate used to stick fight all the time. Like, why <laughs> would you want to do that? <laughs> but some people don't understand, and other people get it. It was so funny, too, when we were talking about that in, in L.A., and, and uh, we had this just long talk about, like, oh, well, I started doing this with Isaac, and then we would fight all the time in the backyard, and then, like, a month after I learned how to swing a stick at all, like, then I had my first fight, like we had bouts and I don't know, mm-hmm. and I don't know, fought like 15 times that day, probably like we, but we'd had maybe a, a hundred fights up, up until then, just in a month. Like we fucking scrapped all the time. We'd like Isaac and I go in the backyard. I was managing a nightclub and, and we'd, uh, we'd go on the dance floor when all the bartenders are counting out their money and, and me and a couple of the bouncers, we would fight, you know, and, and we'd have full context. We'd, we'd go and bang out. And then if it went to the ground, we're, it was like that and, until somebody quit and uh it was fun as hell man but fuck we're getting all amped up talking about this and and, and i was like I, I texted isaac i was like i think we're gonna have a comeback here we might but me and keith both both might come back and and fight again it gets you going man it's like that that kind of thinking like and and, and then where do you stop it like at what at what point no you've had enough fights tate and that's enough you know or, or whatever at what 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 your time frame is yeah, I don't look at it as stopping, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just moving on, you know. It's yep. definitely not stopping. It's like you got to get good at something. Like, I figure, like, there's a – I don't know. It's like with training gi jiu-jitsu or no gi jiu-jitsu for me, I, I think. Like, like if you're going to train and fight MMA, it seems like you want to train inside that wheelhouse a little bit and figure out, like, what how, how an overhook is different than being able to grab somebody's sleeve. Like, if you don't know those things, you're in a lot of trouble, you know. But, like – but other than that, it's like if you're not doing that, fuck, do it. Do what you have fun at. But if there's only enough time and you've got your sport that you've got to look at, you've got to look at how do I get the best at that sport, you know? And, and, and that's how I feel about, like, stunts and acting and shit, too. It's like if you've only got X amount of hours in the day, you've got to spend that time training those muscles and getting getting good at that. Like, 
I was talking to a guy today, and it's like a, the, when you talk about people talk about, oh, retirement, or I want to, like, I don't even see what really what that looks like. There's never a time I'm not going to want to be doing something, making something, creating something, or, or getting better at something, you know? You, you're, you're talking, you, you, you ever, you're toying with ideas about maybe if somebody called you, you, you would, uh, you'd compete again? It just depends on the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm not doing anything right now. I just finished my last acting deal, but, uh, I don't know. I get, who knows? I, I'm in a weird place right now. And I can tell everybody that I'm semi-retired, but if I got the right call, who knows? But if I got a call for another acting deal, I don't know. I'm just semi-retired. I'm just going with it. I'm living day to day right now. Yeah. Training all the time, though, and that's like uh, I train. I finish training whenever I can. So, and honestly, like it's, I've taken my first real break, mental break, ever since probably 2000, and it's weird looking back now and now like when i do train like i get i have better training sessions like um like they're smarter training sessions right tell us about that like you when we were talking before and you i don't know i hadn't seen you for a bit and then you're like i've just been training at danny's and just boxing and hadn't you hadn't done any sparring in like eight months or a year or something like that and then you went back and sparred that day and you're like man i fucking felt better than ever and everything was clicking and and all that yeah that was it like you get in ruts um and i definitely got in a big rut with diet nutrition and everything and doing the same training for, uh, uh, say say for him we're talking about boxing and doing the same boxing every day and you go to spar every Tuesday and Thursday and, and you think you're getting better you think you're working on stuff but really you're not you're just getting hit in the head a lot more you might I mean is my jab getting any better is am I, I'm just like I'm working on different combinations and forgetting all the combinations basically I'm right. not really right yeah so so I went to Danny Romero's and uh and went to a boxing gym, and Danny Romero <laughs> was like one of the greats of, of, of his time, and and it was like really old school, a bunch of kids running around, and like their gym is an old school gym, like if you went back um, 80 years to a boxing gym, and uh, and basically that's the way they train too, is like, it's, it's like shadow boxing, I, I jump rope for like 20 minutes till my calves are about to explode, and then I shadow box for the rest of the time, and, and it was just like my muscles aren't used to this, and and Danny's yelling at me like no one's yelled at me since I was in high school, probably making fun of me for not being able to move, being a white boy, for not being able to know how to throw a jab. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of the best compliments I ever got is like, now you're throwing a hook like a Mexican. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I, went, I went back to training with a whole new skill set, and, 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 and I was picking a couple guys apart a little bit. Um, not, not I wouldn't say apart, but just different, like, and and had a purpose so so like man it really made me want to come back and fight again but um like i said i'm just taking it day by day right <laughs> <laughs> he gets all excited and then weaves it back down no no but really though i don't know you know i mean but if shogun wants to whatever <laughs> it's cool what 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 um the other thing is too is like you got certain guys it's like i've got these five guys that are my sparring partners and i they know how i move i mean we're talking about that like with joey bill senior like and, and like how it's like everybody started going, oh, well, there's that hook and that overhand, and like then you start avoiding that, and then he tries to throw that away, what he's so excellent at, but then he's robbing himself of one of his best weapons that he could use in, in actual competition, you know what I mean? It's like there's there's all those things to consider, you know, and, and that I mean, if you're not discussing it all the time, it seems like you lose it a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Jo Joey's a great example of that. Uh, Joey's a good friend of, of, of me and Kyle's, and we both know that like he – like he, he's probably one of the best all-time fighters, but he he doesn't have that that recognition. Um, he mm -hmm. just had to make tough decisions and and whatever. Like he should have been on a reality show and he should have been a superstar a after that. He's such a great personality, but just pe anybody that comes into Jackson and spars, especially back in the day, like like that's a guy you don't want to spar with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the guy that's gonna tax you and he'll smile. Yeah, but yeah, but, yeah. but he's gonna show you what's what. Like this is my house. Yeah, yeah. I think he's the first guy to ever actually ring my bell, like, you know, when you get hit in the head and you hear that, Dum! I think he's the very first guy to ever do that to me. Yeah, he throws hammers for sure, uh -huh. man. And a lot of bad intention with it. Uh -huh. Um, and, and so you guys, neither neither of you guys have seen maybe one of the best movies that came out this year, The Lone Ranger, yet. Why, why is that? For, for me, I, I just kind of watched Johnny Depp 
be an Indian and, and run around with that fake Stupid crow in his head. <laughs> his head. Yeah. It's fantastic, and that's called art. Okay, Carl? <laughs> so, so th this is the thing, Carl. Like I was telling we, we were sitting on Transcendence with, with, with all the Senate guys and, uh, and, and talking about movies and, and Tate's talking about how this, uh, what is it, Minoro, <laughs> Long Ranger, is one of the best <laughs> movies ever. And like, I, I don't know that I went so far as to say the best ever, but there's a lot of critics that were talking a lot of shit. It kind of, and I was like, it's bullshit because it's fucking fantastic. It's a great movie. And the sequel is going to be great. And there's a great backstory and the action carried it and everything. It kind of crushed me a little bit. And I, I tell Tate, like, Tate. That's what he says, though, not having seen it at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, I know uh, there's no way I'm going to watch this movie with Don, Johnny Depp running around with a stupid bird on his head <laughs> and, and all that stuff. And, and I go, Tate, all right, Tate, like, I'm going to watch this movie, but. I'm really kind of nervous because it's going to really affect my opinion on you and your <laughs> judgment of movies. <laughs> Did you see The Long Riders? Me, of course. Love The Long Riders. Well, I've never seen it. It's ever. It was, it was, it was, um, yeah, one of the, I don't know. It's like, t for me, as a top five Western. is awesome. And, and Lion uh, Range is your number one? No. Uh, Maybe Tombstone is close to number one. Or, or it's Outlaw Josie Wales. Good, some, the Bad, the Ugly. Something like that. <laughs> or High Noon. But High Noon is awesome. But then I told that to uh, 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 a guy, a, a stunt coordinator friend of mine, and he was like, he's like, you're either trolling me or you've got the worst taste in movies ever. He's like, that Long Riders was a piece of shit. I can't believe that you stole two hours. for Like the whole thing. <laughs> kind of like what I'm getting right now. I haven't seen it yet, but that's a three-hour investment, isn't it? The Long Range is three hours? No, I think it's two. Maybe, it, But it's a... Full too, I think. I don't know. It, it, it's all of it, but you're gonna love every minute. Did you're gonna you thank like me Pirates so of much. The, like the, the first second, one was good. The second and the third one. I didn't see those. Yeah, I left during the second one. Yeah. I didn't even like the, first, the first one too much. One. It was all right to me. It was all right. I don't know. I guess the Disney guys they said to Johnny Depp when he came out, and he's like, "Well, here's what I'm gonna do," and he filmed some of his shit. They're like, "You can't. We can't have a gay dancing drunk pirate. Like that's not gonna be our character. We're Disney." And, He's like, fuck you, that's what I'm doing. And they're like, fuck that, you can't do that. We're, and they tried to re they're gonna recast and all that. And he's like, this is how I'm gonna this is this is who Jack Sparrow is to me. And uh, and then he did it and then it became their biggest franchise yeah, ever. It's, it's a trip the way that shit happened. It was happened. pretty cool. It, it was cool, like the first one, like, like where it wasn't too over the top, but then it was like, all right, I don't know, in my mind Disney was like, All right, that was a success, but let's just do that and make it times two. Yeah. Right, and yeah, turn turn it up. Yeah. That's, that's when producers I think fuck up the whole art of it like what it could be i wonder how much it gets twisted like that yeah <coughs> i heard right now too is uh you, i don't know you know like like transcendence like i don't know what that movie's about and we just spent over a month on it but uh it's like you don't know how they're gonna turn out with editing or where any of that stuff goes with it yeah can we talk about that i don't know <laughs> what's that about that yeah. i don't know yeah what that movie i watched last night uh felon Wait. Uh yeah, he sends me a pic he sends he sends me a picture of me. I've got like a prosthetic all over my neck and then I get stabbed up. <laughs> That's a pretty good movie. You I, like I can't it? believe you haven't seen it. Uh uh, not yet. I had to watch it because like you you're in it. Joey, Joey Joey's Tommy. in it. Tommy. Hey, Joey got says, lines, doesn't he? I think he says one word and then oh. picks the guy out by the neck and, and slams him and then gets <laughs> beat up by Stephen Dorff. Yeah. I feel like Joey should get started in a remake of Chopper. Chopper, the the Australian movie? Uh huh. That's a good movie. Yeah. That's one of Eric Banner's best. I love Chopper. that movie. What's that best one? I don't know. About, about the ears. Yeah, yeah everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you go online and you just look for quotes from Chopper, like, yeah. <laughs> it's all your best tough guy lines. You don't need to do that. I showed it to someone the other day. Uh, Chuck, this guy that's living with me now, and he's actually scared to go to Australia now because everyone in Australia is like this movie, so... Yeah, you guys are all one way or another. I mean, you guys have a reputation. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like. Except for in Sydney. I don't want to talk about Sydney. Why? Man, Sydney's weird. Is it like the San Francisco of Australia? I guess it's like yeah. Wacko World, though. Like, um, I, I, I've been busting uh, Carl's balls about this forever. <laughs> like, because I got friends of Australia and I got another friends of Australia. Sydney's like. Like I said, Wacko World, like, all the guys there are, like, super dressed up. You can tell they, they get their hair or whatever, eyebrows or whatever. They spend a lot of time thinking about it. Like, going into a restaurant, and then the girls are, like, walking around in sweats and just, like, whatever. Like, they don't care. 
Yeah, the the guys dress like girls and the girls dress like guys, basically. And I don't know why he looked why at my is hair. That? I don't know. I don't know why he looked at my hair when <laughs> Keith said, "Yeah, the you're guys are all dressed up." <laughs> you're a fancy guy. I don't know. Come on, man. I mean, you, your shoes, everything. My shoes. I got a pair of red Nikes. That's not fancy. You should see. If only if this were live video. <laughs> my, my, my girls in town have got to dress nice for her. She's only used a couple of weeks. So tell me this: is is your uh, like, what has your diet changed from going from as heavy as you've been to, to going to fight at 170? And do you have something that's sustainable or are your cuts just more severe? No, um, you know what? I clean my diet up a lot now. Uh, what does that mean? Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I don't really get into diets and, and, and too much of anything. Um, I guess if you could put it on anything, it's more like a paleo diet. Um, you know, what? I, I try to eat everything that's wholesome. You know, I don't try to eat anything that's processed. I try to stay away. Like from apple pie is wholesome. American wholesome. <laughs> Come on. Uh, you guys eat that Vegemite shit. That's fucking poisonous. That's hey, wholesome, hey, actually. That's Carl's like, like one. Of the, he doesn't like anything sweet, man. So yeah. Sweet, man. Yeah, I, I, I don't that's sweet too. And girls for Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, uh, come on, candy and stuff, that's just for kids. Right, yeah. yeah. It's not a man's you, food. You grow that stuff and you get, like, 10 when we become a man. Like, in Australia, we become men at 10. So we, after 10 years old, we don't eat candy. <laughs> what, what happens to a young fella at 10 <laughs> that he becomes a man? And should I be sorry for you? Is it because of the Catholic influence? What go goes on? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's nothing like that. We just uh, we grow up a little bit tougher in Australia, I guess. It takes you guys to be about 21, I think. Is that right? Yeah, something That's like complimentary. That. You got to bring home a croc to, to enter the... Yeah, kill a croc yeah. and the blood on your head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like walking we, with we, the croc's we, head on your head. And the we got to kill, like, de kill deer. Like, they got to go kill a croc <laughs> with a knife. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. when we were kids, it would all be killed deer. And some guys, it depends where you kind of grew up, but some guys would, when you gut it, they'd take your head, like the older dudes, and shove your head into the guts. And so you'd come <laughs> out and you're just covered in... And, oh, but others would just take and, and, and wipe it down your face, you know? Yeah, something like that. Bonding. So your diet didn't change drastically when you went decided to go to 170. No, I wasn't cutting weight much to 185. So, uh, you know, I, like I said, I just tweaked a few little things. Like uh, I stopped eating bread. Um, That's huge. Yeah. It, it's just basically a filler. So yeah. you know, I stopped eating that. I don't eat wheat much. And, uh, yeah, I just sort of try to eat everything, you know, if, if it's – Meat, I eat all meats, but then if you know, I try to even if it's grown in the ground, then it's good for me. You know, if people got to make it and put all these chemicals in it, then I don't want to eat it. Yeah, yeah, especially nowadays, it seems like it seems is like it's harder to differentiate. Has that been for a long time? Is that a recent thing? Or uh, you know what? I, I've kind of always been healthy. Like try to eat like that my whole life. Um, you know what? A few years ago, I probably sort of. Especially come to America, where you get like a big variety of food. That's what I was gonna say. Was it a surprise? Like, was it like when you came to America, where you're like, "Holy fuck, they eat this shit!" Like, is it way different? Or yeah, I guess I was a bit naive when I first came. I didn't really look at anything, and I just started eating everything. And I was like, you know, like, I can't believe there's this there's this product with no calories, or this product with no fat, or this with nothing. You know, but when you break it down, it was basically all chemicals and all this junk put in to, to make to make it taste like something. So. Um, yeah, I just stopped eating no crap like that. It's interesting. Like I, I, I've got a, a friend. I, I just um, this woman that helped raise me, and and her name is Mrs. Bauer, and she got dying of cancer, and it's like some rare can one, you know, another yet rare cancer that they're not sure. Of. But she's just drank diet cola forever, and it's like it's like sh you know shit like that. Like it's like that's a known. There's it's like all that stuff, sucralose and all that, like splendas all those things are known uh carcinogens like they're known to they like they know they're like that gives you cancer and it's like there's so much stuff like that that's all over our food that they know has deleterious effects to the body that you're going to suffer grave grave uh physical dangers from but then it's all okay and it's okay by the fda and it's like you're a kid and you're like oh the fda it's approved by the, so you think it's yeah. got some modicum of safety involved with it and it's like you're you're you can buy stuff that will kill you and like people are so fucking stupid it's like i've got such a, a a dissonance between the event happening and then and then the disaster happening that i'm like like you don't see lung cancer when you're smoking a cigarette and you're 12 or whatever but like it, it can say on the pack this is going to kill you it's going to yeah. kill your babies it's going to and we go ahead and do it anyway and it's a it's a weird consciousness that we have where it's like there's an accept acceptability of that now and, and I, I don't know if that's through advertisement or what but is is there a similar consciousness in in Australia as well, or would they just go? That's fucking insane. Why would I eat that? 
Yeah, I think we have we're a lot stricter on our food. You know, um, personally, I think the FDA is a joke. You know, they they allow they're like, oh, well, you know what, this has got a little bit of arsenic in it, but yeah, it's acceptable. Let's we'll let them eat it. So, uh, you know, I think Australia is a lot stricter, and I think uh, New Zealand's a lot stricter than Australia. I think New Zealand's probably one of the world leaders in in, in wholesome, healthy, wholesome food. But uh, this, I, I just can't believe. Personally, me, I can't believe the stuff that the FDA will let people eat. It's just a joke to me. It's also getting scary, I think, too, because it's like I've been thinking lately, like, because like all you, like a lot of my friends are real conscious about all that stuff, but. It seems like in five to seven years or something, it'll come a time when no matter how conscious you are, you're not going to be able to avoid it. It's like there's these big corporations that are owning mm -hmm. owning food now, and like, and, and I don't know. It's like I don't know how to get around that, you know. Other than, like, I just try to buy local everywhere, go to farmers markets, which I used to think were gay and hippie <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm not fucking. But now it's like, fuck yeah, that's cool. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like that. Yeah, it's like before, you know. What I thought was gangster when I was a kid is way different than having a good credit score as an adult is gangster, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of scary. It kind of makes me want to go back home and, and just buy some property and, and, you know, raise my own animals and, and grow all my own food and stuff like that, you know. So Get some room meat. Some room meat. That's yeah. good for you, man. Yeah. It's one of the highest protein meats and, and low in fat. And yeah, that's like white-tailed deer back where I'm from. Is the, That's the same thing, like one of the best meats that you can eat. Like Bambi? Bambi, yeah, and heart organs too. I was reading a thing about how organ meat is pretty vital for us that we eat that. There's a lot of guys that talk if you're not eating hooved animals that you're missing out on a huge part of the diet that you need that you'll never perform as well as you could, like yeah. throw a lot of the collagens and all that. Interesting, no. <coughs> we eat, uh, I like liver. We eat liver and bacon back home, brought lamb spray. Bacon. <laughs> yeah, bacon, bacon make anything taste good though. <laughs> How's your how's your diet different now than it was? And, and if you were to compete again, do you think that would affect your cutting or your your keeping in a certain way? Do you think that there's a a, a benefit to to fighting at a lower weight for you, or would you want to be at 205? Um, no, no, the uh, the cut, cutting weight. Um, like I had two fights at 185, and um, and I, I don't even consider those fights. Like I I really uh, I, uh, I wasn't present in the, in those fights, and that's because. I think there's a lot of problems with my diet before, and then, and then two factors w with a bad diet magnified, and, and then that magnified uh, me being a little bit older, and that's the first time I ever felt age is when I had to cut weight, and just recovering from workouts and eating all the carbs and bread and all the, all the garbage that that my dietitian had had me eating, and just made me feel like garbage and. And I, I look pretty good. And I use that, for example, here at my, my fitness studio. Is like a lot of people can walk around looking like, like they, they have some abs and, and all that, but it doesn't mean they're healthy. It doesn't mean that they have low inflammation. And, and my inflammation was through the roof, and it was affecting everything in my body. So, so when I went out and actually competed, I, I was pretty much like a, uh, like a zombie, like no spring in my step. I couldn't move. My, my uh, brain function was slow. And... And, and just everything compounded, and it, and then the, and that that com ma made me seem old for the first time, and that's why I got like I was texting you all the time about like how good I was sparring and feeling better than ever, and I'm thinking about man, I gotta do it once and just just fight and feel this way, but uh, uh, it's because I changed my diet. I started doing a paleo diet type diet, um, and it's just been awesome. When when I used to worry about my my um, meals, I would have to count like how many carbs I got in there and I was worried about the calories and if I got enough protein and, and I would never put fat in my food because like why, why would I add all yeah, this fat makes you fat is fat what the idea is right yeah and there's yeah. so much calories and fat like I'm not going to add butter or, or anything like this avocado like I'm going to put avocado I'm going to put it away because there's a lot of extra calories right where the opposite now is like when I'm eating is like is there enough fat in my meal yeah, right exactly and, yeah that's a weird thing that every I mean it's 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 it's, uh, it's too bad that the name is the same like like that we call like adipose tissue fat yeah. and, and that also the fat in our diet as a macronutrient is also fat like because it's it, like I insulin being a storage hormone that's just affects sugar regulation is, is that, that stores everything as fat that adipose tissue and then fat is just energy it just burns or you shit it out it's like it's like it's processed instantly it's either instant um energy or, or not and if you're used to burning sugar then you're going to need to burn sugar you're going to need to eat 
every every couple hours or whatever yeah. you're gonna crash you know and, and like for me it's like so sustainable to be like high fat because then like you're either burning sugar or you're burning fat but you're not like sometimes this you've got to train your body to be one way or the other and it's like if you're just burning fats then when fats aren't present in your body your body will eat eat its own adipose tissue to and man i can go for a day without eating easy and bang hard workouts and not give a shit and i never feel like lightheaded or this or that i don't feel like i'm robbing myself of nutrition you know and that's just a horrible cycle and you see i see it here here in my gym and when i was training i, I think when i was training towards the end there i was working out more in the off season to maintain body composition and, and, and all that stuff than to get better for fighting right yeah exactly yeah and then you see that here in the gym you see people that um they are just on that 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 cycle of of eating their carbs all the time, and, and that's their energy where the brain is is lacking glucose, so they need to get, get, uh, eat carbs in every two hours. And now they got to come in here and burn off whatever excess calories and stuff in the gym with an incredible uh, workout that releases a lot of cortisol because it's not natural. And, and then you got to repair from that, which you may yeah. not do by the time you got to work out again in the morning. Like it's a horrible cycle. Yeah, <coughs> that's what I, I was talking to. Um, like uh, uh, this little belt holder and, and, and talking about like, you know, you go up and you're, you're, you're optimized and you, you've cut your weight, you've gone through your camp and you're, you're fighting at, at whatever weight and you, um, and then you do that and then you just slide downhill and it's just pizza and Sundays and this and that. And it's like for, uh, until, until when, until you get a call again and go, now you got another date and that, and then you go, okay, get serious. But there's all that emotional stuff you go through and you want to bathe yourself with food and be comforted and do it. That, there's all the things that fighters go through, but then to always do that, you're always only going back to that set point. Whereas like now with like, what I look at as a sustainable diet that's healthy and, and, and like what I try to talk about as much as I can is that then what, what if you just get heavier, but your body composition stays pretty much the same. You're just eating a little more cause you didn't, you, you're not cutting the weight or whatever. And then you get even better the next time after you go through a camp because you're never coming from an ill health. Mm -hmm. But it's like so many athletes put themselves after the event into a, into a poor health state and this spiral that then they have to come back up from that. What if you just stayed at a good health, you know? And that's where, that's where fucking champions are, you know what I mean? And if you're not doing that, especially with information that's coming out and the way athletes are now, you might as well just quit. Yeah. Start looking for what you're doing next because you don't you don't have the discipline to do what it takes is what it seems like. Yeah, you're not if if, if you're in the off season running around with a pretty good gut, you're you're, you're not a professional athlete. Like you, you need you need to put on weight, you need to put on a little bit more fat in the off season because you're going to need that energy. But um, like we were sitting on set and there was a fighter there we were looking at the other day that was eating Cheetos. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like, wh what are you doing, man? Yeah. That was one of the funniest things ever. Um, I was on set w with Tate, and um, I busted their balls on that first, um, him and another stuntman. And the stuntman, too, the same thing, man. You got to look a certain way. You want to get that role. You want to be a – Well, and there's yeah. these guys that want to be stuntmen. Like, yeah. a couple of them are, like, these yeah. SAG extras that are, like, they, they want to be stuntmen. And I'm like, you got to be ready. Like, if, if a dude comes up right now and he's like, hey, dude, I'm going to need a bunch of guys for – and you're going to have no shirts on and you need to look a certain – like, you're going to look like you got titties, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, you, you, you're either going to be prepared or you're not all the time. So, so, so me, me, me and Tate, Tate were sitting there. I busted the guy's balls about the Cheetos and, and the Doritos and the coffee, the, the cookie. You know, the package was two cookies. They offered us one. <laughs> like, no. So yeah, these orange-ass crackers yeah. with peanut butter in the yeah. middle or something. So, so like, uh, maybe 10 minutes later, some, somebody asked, hey, I'm making a run for Crafty. Do you guys need any water? And Tate goes, no, but... Uh, you might want to get these guys some Doritos, or uh, do you guys want anything else? Like, uh, do you want some chips or <laughs> yeah. brownies or anything? Yeah, that was awesome. Jeez. But it's not that hard of a decision once you're eating a, a good lifestyle. Like, I eat bacon and hamburgers almost every day. I really yeah. do. It's no, it's yeah. no lie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like people are like, oh, I don't want to restrict it. It's like when you talk about a diet. Like, I don't follow any diet. It's like people are like, oh, like the other night at dinner, uh, somebody's like, oh, well. You're like a paleo, and I'm like I'm paleo-ish. Like I, I, I don't, like I eat cheese. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I try to eat goat cheese. I try to eat cheese that is, like, has less inflammation and, and and for my chest and congestion. But like, um, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't mess with any wheat. I don't, I can't eat gluten like and feel good about anything. I go, I, I eat sugar. I go right to sleep. But like I'll eat super high fats and I'll eat almost no fruit and then i'll eat a bunch of broccoli and stuff it's like I, I keep pretty low carbohydrate really high fat and a moderate to low protein it's not like i'm 
banging out 15 steaks a day. It's like maybe I'll eat a half a steak sometimes one day, and that's maybe it, you know. But it's not like it's not like it's unsustainable. It's not like I'm not enjoying every bit that I have. It's like I'm, it's just a non-issue. I'm not like craving it like an addict. Whereas like when I make poor choices, I do crave it like an addict. And, and a broccoli is not like dry broccoli. It's broccoli drenched in butter. Yeah, so butter. Yeah. Oh, you know what else I love is I, I'll put uh, coconut oil all over that bitch and that coarse uh, sea salt. Or I, hollandaise sauce has been my new friend, and I will just – that's oh, just – it says butter like and crazy. eggs. Oh, yeah, I make it like crazy. I made, a, I put it on, on, I made my own little uh, egg benedict the other day. It it's awesome. awesome. Yeah. I put it on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you, man? You cook at home, Kyle? I cook all the time. I, I hardly ever eat out. Um, I'm the same. I just cook, you know, vegetables. I love my meat, though. I've always got to have a big steak. That's Ooh, what we always have known about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, man. I thought you guys something else earlier when you said, I bang out such and such so many workouts. I thought you were going to say something else. But. See, but I'm a gentleman. Yeah, I know. Who, who, who cooks between you and Esther? Um, <laughs> Esther cooks breakfasts mostly. She'll get up and make the bacon and eggs. I cook all the dinners. But uh, Is that is that because that's man stuff? Exactly, you know, I gotta work the grill and stuff like that. She's in the kitchen cooking all the, the lighter stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she's watching. I gotta be careful what I say because she's behind me watching me. Do you do you do you think um, also uh, what what do you think uh, as far as your training? Do you worry about head injury? Do you worry about any of that stuff? Does that come up for you at all? No, not really. Um, do you spar hard every week, like uh, kickboxing? Yeah, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, sparring days are my favorite days. I can't, you know, I know it's uh, it's a constant head trauma, it's probably not too good for us, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm stubborn. I love sparring. So, uh, what what do you think about like when you hear like an experience that like Keith had at Danny's and and like how much progression happened, just changing that bit? Like, th does that sound interesting to you, or is it like because I, I like I know like a lot of times like guys are resistant to changing diets or training regimens because they're like there's a superstition about it and like. No, this is what I'm doing. It's been working okay. I'm going to stay here. Or, like, how do you feel about that? No, I'm definitely open to it. You know, I think uh, you can go anywhere and learn anything. Um, you know, that's why I started working with the Gi again. Uh, I want to find a good ju uh, judo school around town and just try a bit of judo in between. Um, you know, I'm open to do anything. You know, uh, I'd like to go check out the boxing, you know, once my hand heals. So, um, yeah, I, I know I need to do more yoga as well. Um, I hate yoga. Awesome. <laughs> it's so awesome. Have you done it? I've done it a few times. Um, I think Keith took me for my first uh, hot yoga many years ago, and uh, I almost died. But um, awesome. yeah, it's just uncomfortable for me. But I know I need to do it, so I'm gonna start it's, doing it. It's horribly it. uncomfortable, but man, it's like if I could do it every day, if it, I, I would. It's awesome. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll let you know when I start doing it again. <laughs> thing with yoga is, is in fitness, you, you work on better movement and better function, and getting your body to where it's supposed to be because. You know, everything, to, to me, everything goes back to the two way, like we're talking about, everything you talk about, um, societies and, and the way, way our societies are supposed to be to, um, you know, like we were talking about that, um, the uh, sex at dawn, my, like um, uh, sex, everything comes back to where we evolved and what we're, we're meant to be, like what we've done for millions of years. And uh, now in society, everything's changed. Now we sit in chairs all the time. And, and that does a right. good thing. It wears grooves in our hips, tightens our hamstrings, and, and messes with the lower back. So mm -hmm. so now all these things are just going to, like, I was just today, I was sitting at, at the, at the uh, Flying Star and watching the, a couple old people walk in, and, and one was all bent over to the side and with a guy that could barely lift his feet. Like, these things just don't happen to us naturally. Like, if, 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 if we have good function throughout our lives this isn't going to happen right. to us and, and we should all be thinking about this because we're all going to grow old like yep. we might be able to manage certain things now but maybe 20 30 40 years like what are we going to do yep, like then with, what with the irreversible yeah, yeah exactly so that's the thing too about like the diet thing is like stuff that like it doesn't show up until there's been an accumulation of decades and then the decay you can't you can't there's not there's no cure for that <coughs> It's like that thing I think about, like going to the doctors in the same way is that they, they treat you as if as if you're a broken entity and you need this outside thing to make you better instead of going, you came from perfection and you can heal yourself back into that. You know what I mean? With 
food and this and that or mobility like there's so many of those things like all that movement stuff when people are like oh, i just can't do this anymore or oh. you see a guy that's fucking 35 years old and he's like yeah you know i got old football injury from high school i'm like <laughs> you should kill yourself you are a fucking <laughs> pussy like that's the worst shit ever don't tell me that i'm gonna fucking laugh right at you and offer you a shotgun it's just a crush, man. Everybody has their own story. Oh, that's just my shoulder. I can't do that thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got problems too, guys. Like, come on. Like, like it's, it's crazy. And it's crazy too. Like, little little Isaac just went through a, a, a fucking back surgery for God's sakes, and he'll fight again in a few months. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. you look at Kong and like what he, all the surgeries that oh he's gone gosh. through, right? Yeah. And and it's like, at what point do you go? Oh yeah, I'm gonna allow life to stop me now, or you don't. You know? I mean, that's those are the differences. It's the old saying, man. You stop moving, you die. Yep, yep. Well, cool, man. Um, I want to do this again, but uh, thanks for making the time and taking the time and all that. And I don't know if you got sponsors you want to thank or say hello to or anything like that. Um, and wh- when do you leave again? October, late October. Okay, cool. So we can do this again before then. We could do this even on, on Keith's birthday. Halloween? <sighs> well, how about we do this in Montreal? Oh, yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. Well, I think I'm going to leave tomorrow, so I don't know that we'll go. Uh, I got to see that coffee guy then tonight. It, that's another thing, too, is Keith and I got this great coffee coming. We're probably going to have a new coffee brand coming out soon that will be uh, available. Maybe we'll sell it online or whatever. But Is, is it, com- it going to be the white stuff? Completely bulletproof coffee that is fucking all single origin that just comes right from our man's farm to his hands, roasts, and to our hands. Is like, it, it going to make me grow big? It'll give you big, you thick, thick, beards. full beards. <laughs> You're going to look very more manly. <laughs> you might get a chest full of hair, too. <laughs> yep, yep. Your dick will grow about three quarters of an inch is what we've seen. Sold. Right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, we'll have the white. Yeah, we're going to have the white. We'll have dark. I think, you know, we'll have a couple different. Hey, have you been trying the white? Yeah. This, this, anybody that's had Bulletproof coffee, like w- we got this new coffee blend that people, uh, uh, roasters don't do, but we know the roasters that, they get the coffee bean from their family farm in Colombia, and they're going to roast these beans a certain way for us that makes the just plain bulletproof coffee with no additives, just this, this, this Kerrygold and MCT, and the coffee just tastes It's like, amazing. Yeah. It's like, and it's creamy in a different way. Too. It's oh, it is so d- different. And the caffeine, fl- the, like, it's it's awesome. It, oh, all, it has it's a higher all, caffeine. It's all like the, You on take point. one sip, and it's yep. like the first time you have like, bulletproof oh. coffee. Yeah, it's good. And then these guys, they invited us down to their farm. They're like, they've got this farm, this plantation, this coffee farm. They're like, come down to Columbia anytime. But I'm like, that that's going to be awesome. That'll be a great trip. I can't wait to do that. Yeah, let me come along on that trip. trip as well. All right. All right. You might get me into coffee. Hey, they're across down there, don't they? Didn't um, um, Escobar, um, didn't they? Um, I think they got them down that way, yeah. Dude, if you're Pablo Escobar, don't you just have like 100 crocs around your property? Know, he, he had a zoo, man. He has hippos that they call him. They, they call him or ask about some some of the hippos. He has hippos. They have a, he had a whole zoo there that he made <laughs> people bring in for him. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll talk no to problem. you soon.